Disney is one of the largest, most successful production companies in the industry. It's structured both horizontally and vertically integrated. They're vertical because they have all three aspects of the film industry, production, distribution and exhibition. However, they are all horizontal because they have branched out into other aspects of media, i.e. music, TV and websites. In all of these other companies, Disney are able to broaden their market share and increase their distribution and advertisement of products on a much larger scale. Disney have countless classic films, some more popular than others, but all very successful and have made companies a lot of money. Here's five of the most successful Disney films to date. At number one, we have Frozen with a worldwide growth of 1.2 billion. Next up is Toy Story with 1 billion. Then we have The Lion King with a solid 987 million. Close fourth with 970 million, it's Despicable Me Too. And finally, fifth on our list is Finding Nemo grossing at 936 million. Now that is a lot of money. But the scary thing is that they would be make so much more if it wasn't for the big time competing companies. Sony Pictures, Warner Bros Entertainment and Paramount Pictures Corporation. Disney's worth a huge 142 billion. The figure alone shows how successful the conglomerate is, but success can ju be judged in many different ways. In the last financial year, Disney had a revenue of 45 billion. They made this because nearly 100% of the profit made of anything they market goes to back to Disney. But they own their own stores, publishers and music label. So when things like soundtracks, toys and books are sold, all the money made goes back to the company. Success can also be measured in how successful they are in the box office. Disney's top five films in the box office are The Avengers, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, Toy Story 3, Iron Man 3 and Frozen. Altogether they made over $2 billion. I think that figure shows that they are pretty successful. The argument for this is that if a few conglomerates own many companies, there is no room for the other smaller independent setups because they are always all overshadowed by giant businesses. More often than not, a smaller company gets swallowed by these conglomerates and there has been cases where the company has gone bust. I think that one company owning a lot of things is quite daunting. The statistic that 90% of the digital media is owned by one of the big conglomerates proves this. It shows you how much these huge companies are part of your life because they own so much. It's quite scary and this is why I think that companies that have been swallowed up by the conglomerates keep their names so that it isn't evident how much the conglomerate owns. Disney is a great example of a company that has adapted and innovated in terms of technology in the media. A very famous example is that they were the first to sync video and sound in an animation. Mickey Mouse in Steamboat Willie. They have made technological advances that have made animation and film easier. They used widescreen first in the animation of Lady and the Tramp. They were the first studio to provide regular colour TV, created an optical printer that allowed real time and animation in the same motion picture in Mary Poppins. A more recent example is the first use of CGI in a feature length film. This was a 1995 classic Toy Story. Even now they are adapting and changing in the new animation Big Hero 6. The team at Disney created a new software to get the best visuals for the, for the film. BBC are a publicly funded corporation. This is because all of their funding comes from the TV licence fee, which every homeowner, business and organisation has to pay if they own equipment that they receive or can record live TV broadcasting onto. This equipment includes TVs, computers, mobile phones, game consoles, digital boxes, DVDs, VHS recorders and any other devices. The licence fee must be paid either in full or according to a payment plan agreed with the TV licensing, but the licence is free for over 75s. The most popular TV technology advancement that is still being bettered is definitely picture quality. The TV companies like Panasonic or LG are constantly coming up with new and improved TVs with a much better quality picture than their predecessor for your entertainment. For example, LG have come up with a new technology called Quantum Dots, which create incredible 4K Ultra HD pictures. The new generation of tellies harnesses nano crystals that range in size from 2 to 10 nanometers. With each dot emitting a different color depending on its size, this process adds a film of quantum dots in front of the LCD backlight, resulting in a picture color, reproduction rate, and overall brightness that is significantly improved. Quantum dot technology is already being used by Sony and Amazon. However, Samsung are yet to announce their plans on technological advancements. BBC, however, are heading towards showcasing all of BBC3 online instead of on TVs, which is causing quite a lot of controversy between the public. It means that any long-form programmes currently aired on BBC3 will be moved to BBC1 or BBC2, slotting in at around 10.30pm and later. The digital terrestrial TV bandwidth, previously occupied by BBC3, will now be home to a time-shifted channel, BBC1 Plus One and an extra hour of CBBC channel at night. The BBC say that the most of its BBC3 shows will be moving on to iPlayer, but some of its popular programmes will be moving on to their BBC, other BBC channels. 
Replacing BBC Three with time shifted repeats of BBC One shows, including The Voice, EastEnders, Call the Midwife, and Straight to Come Dancing, is likely to cause yet more disagreement. The BBC are state funded, so they get their money through the Great British public. The public pay a TV licence fee of £145.50. That goes towards funding the BBC. Normal channels are regulated by Ofcom, but Ofcom have very little say in how they regulate the BBC. The BBC Trust manages the BBC. The BBC Trust deals with complaints and what is suitable for the channel rather than Ofcom that only deal with commercial channels. A TV channel's successfulness is judged by viewing figures. The more people watch, the more popular you are. This fluctuates most weeks because different programmes are on, but most weeks the BBC is top. For example, this week's most viewed show was The Voice, with 7 million views more than any other show. Shows on the BBC have had complaints for many different reasons. Most recently, The Voice judge, Rita Ora, wore a revealing dress that totted up 400 complaints with people complaining that the BBC did not manage how appropriately the judge is dressed. The BBC has also had its issues with staff, most well known being Jeremy Clarkson of Top Gear. They have had many complaints made about comments he has made and his overall attitude. Just last week he was suspended from the show after fighting with his producer. This also links nicely with complaints about services as they have dropped the final two episodes of the Top Gear series because of the issue which has caused uproar with the fans. There is a debate every few years on whether the TV licence fee is really that useful. I think this really does depend on who you are. If you don't watch the BBC, why would you want to pay for something you won't be using? It just seems a waste of money, but the flip side to this is that if you do watch the BBC, you'd have to pay for it because it's state-owned. People are really trying to protect the BBC because most channels are commercial and are owned by huge companies. They want to keep the PSBs. The alternative to paying the TV licence is making the BBC go commercial, meaning they would have to get funding through adverts and sponsors. In my opinion, I don't think you should have to pay for the TV licence if you don't watch the BBC. The BBC is becoming less and less popular as people are going digital and start using subscription-based streaming providers. £145.50 is a lot of money to pay for a service you won't use. The only benefit of paying this is that there are no adverts on the channel, but adverts don't really bother viewers as they're part of most of the channels. ITV and Channel 4 are the main rivals on Terrestrial TV. They all have popular shows that get millions of views each week. BBC has The Voice, which is very similar to ITV's X Factor, and all three channels have a soap opera. The BBC has EastEnders, ITV, Coronation Street and Channel 4 Hollyoaks. These shows all compete for the most views.